Hi, my name is Frank Simmerjay. I'm a Senior Product Marketing Manager with Trustworthy Computing at Microsoft. With me today, I have Vinny Galato, General Manager of the MMPC, the Malware Protection Center, and Tim Raines, a Director for Trustworthy Computing Communications Organization. Thank you very much for being here today. Thanks. Today, I think that we'd like to uh, speak a little bit about the Security Intelligence Report, the 10th version, 10th edition of this report. Um, Tim, is there anything you could tell us, uh, brief us on, on what's in this uh, report? Sure, Frank. Uh, version 10 is actually the largest version of the security intelligence report we've ever put together. Uh, it's about 60% larger than any of the past versions that we've published. So uh, one of the primary reasons for this is uh, from the Microsoft Malware Protection Center with Vinny, their lab has really focused on providing uh, malware infection rate data for 117 countries around the world. So it's it's the largest view of the threat landscape that we've ever produced. Uh, inside the report, you'll find a bunch of trends uh, focused primarily on 2010, but going back several years, uh, focused on malware infection rates, uh, vulnerabilities, vulnerability exploits, uh, potentially unwanted software, um, rogue security software, a bunch of topics we've been looking at for several years, and so you'll get some good trend data on that. Fantastic. Also, I think this time around we have some information about software vulnerabilities uh, like we have historically. Could you tell us what we've seen this time around and like prior, prior times? Sure. Um, so the vulnerability data in the SIR goes back several years now and we've, we've taken a look at the uh, number of vulnerabilities, the severity of those vulnerabilities and the access complexity of those vulnerabilities uh, over that period of time. And so what we've seen here uh, and in 2010 uh, is no different is the number of software vulnerabilities that are critical continue to trend down, which is a good thing. Now that um, that means that the number of vulnerabilities, you know, is still high. In every in any six month uh, period, we're still seeing, you know, thousands of vulnerabilities across the software industry being disclosed. But at least it's trending down in the right direction. Right. Uh, the other thing that we've seen is in terms of Microsoft's vulnerabilities, we've seen, uh, you know, over the last several years, five years, Microsoft has trended between three and seven percent of uh, the total vulnerabilities across the entire software industry. And so um, we've been able to manage that pretty consistently despite having, you know, a growing number of products that are supported over a 10 year period. And so, um, you know, we're pretty pleased with that, although, you know, we recognize there's a lot more work to do in that area. Great, thanks a lot, Tim. Um, so for this segment, I wanted to focus in on social engineering. That's an area I think that our audience is very interested in. Um, before we do that, Vinny, could you tell us a little bit about your lab and, and how you uh, participate in collecting this information? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, as Tim mentioned, we have uh, you know expanded the, the the data set that we've been able to look at this time around significantly. Uh, Security Essentials, uh, as of September, had about 30 million users. That continues to grow. That played a large part of it. Of course, we have you know data that comes in from Hotmail, from Bing, uh, from Forefront Endpoint, some of the other Forefront products, as well as you know taking a look at uh, the data that comes back in uh, on the other side of uh, when we do a scan. So that's pretty critical. In addition, we've expanded the labs. Uh, we've got presence now, of course, here in Redmond. We've got presence in Dublin, in Melbourne. Uh, the Chinese lab that we opened up sometime last year has really significantly allowed us to take a, a good look at China and make some distinctions between some of the threats there specifically as opposed to the rest of the world. So that's been pretty important as well. And I think overall, when we've done this deep dive into, like Tim said, 117 different countries, countries, the focus now of having these labs regionally has begun to really pay off. Right, right. I, I definitely, uh, the volume of information is, is really remarkable. Um, and, and again, looking at some of the risks associated with social engineering, I think it's, it's important to, to ask some questions. Uh, what are some of the observations that are occurring that, that pertain to the, the threat around social engineering? Yeah. Well, social engineering, I think, continues to be probably the number one way in which a majority of the threats are spreading. If you look all the way back now, this is our 10th version, if you go back even further than that, 10 or 11, 12 years, social engineering meant somebody put something in an email 
right? And they try to trick somebody into opening up. Right. That actually still happens. Those targets uh, or those uh, threats are a little bit more targeted as opposed to something a little bit more socially engineered today, which typically happens on a website. It's not saying mail doesn't happen, but there are now um, vulnerabilities that will exist in a multitude of browsers in which users can then get exposed to some new phishing attack. Phishing attacks have been up this time around, right? The impressions around phishing we find continue to go up, increase anywhere from 8 to 10 percent. So those types of threats for us are those that we can really focus on now. Rogues continue to go up as well. Some of the gaming uh, online gaming and those cloud applications have been targeted a bit more and so that becomes a problem not just for uh, you know the typical day-to-day -day user on the internet but those who have password protected accounts on gamers now are targeted a bit more frequently from what we're seeing. Excellent. Well, you know, I think uh, the session was great. I appreciate your time. Maybe we could actually leave our, our viewers with some information as to what they can do to protect themselves. Tim, are there any some general guidance that we can, uh, we can discuss? Absolutely. So I think the guidance is, uh, from a high level, is the same both for enterprises or for consumers. But once you get into some of the details, of course, implementation of those things are a little different. So for consumers, you know, our Protect Your PC guidance is still relevant after all these years. Mm -hmm. Do things like run anti-malware software, uh, do things like keep your system up to date uh, with security updates, not just for Microsoft software, but for all software from all of the software companies that, that uh, you're running software on your system from. You know, pay attention to what you're clicking on. If, if you're opening up mail, make sure you know who it's from. If you're uh, double clicking on attachments or links, make sure you kind of trust, you know, who sent you the attachment and kind of trust where that link is from because it's going to take you someplace that might try to install malware on your system. Right. In addition, for enterprises, inside the Security Intelligence Report Volume 10, like in some past versions, we've had Microsoft's IT department uh, write some guidance for enterprises on what they think you should do in order to protect your enterprise and to make sure that your, your security posture is where it should be. Vinny, any parting words on, on protecting your system? Yeah, I, I can't um, you know, back up what Tim says enough. I, mean, I think it's important to make sure that you know, security software is on the box, keep it updated. Uh, make sure that you understand you know, what your security vendor is telling you, whether it be Microsoft or you know, one of our partners, uh, because today uh, the threat numbers just continue to grow rapidly, and I think people uh, need to have an understanding of you know, what's out there. They're not going to see it. You know, anymore. It's not like we're going to talk about a threat coming in through email. You're going to be going to you know, a known good website. Uh, it somehow or another could be compromised. You're going to find yourself with a rogue on the box. Uh, if you're a gamer, maybe something like Tatter F, uh, which we saw you know, an increase as well this time around. And so you know, it's, it's pretty important to keep you know, update, 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 as we've talked about in the past. Right, right. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. I would recommend that if uh, you're interested in any additional information that we've spoke about today, you can find it all on our website at www.microsoft.com forward slash SIR. Thank you very much. Again, gentlemen, Tim, Vinny, thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Thanks.